and a big hey you to Miss Alex. Hey, Miss Alex, I understand you went and got yourself engaged to old Josh. Well, he told me a lot of good things about you, and uh, sounds like you guys are headed off on the right track. Says you play that game, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, all the time on your Xbox. <laughs> Boy, that game's a lot of fun, isn't it? I mean, you never know what's going to come out of the door. Uh, if my dear old mama was still alive, she'd have looked at me playing that game, and she'd have said, Boy, that's more fun than drunk monkeys in church. <laughs> I miss mama. Oh, well, uh, he said, uh, could you tell Alex uh, something funny about the movie or something secret? <laughs> we would make this low, low-budget movie, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And now, a funny thing happens on a, a really low-budget movie. Um, you get to a certain point in the movie where you don't have enough money to do what you need to do, you don't have enough time, and uh, <laughs> you get to where, on a normal movie, a big budget movie, you always be trying to do your best, afraid if you mess up, they might fire you. <laughs> that doesn't happen in a low budget movie. They get about two thirds way into the movie, and no matter what happens, they can't fire you because they don't have enough money to reshoot the scenes that they didn't have enough money to shoot in the first place. So you get this kind of yeah, attitude. One day, Jimmy C. Dow and me, the cook, we uh, were about to shoot that famous scene where uh, the cook drives up in the truck and i am got the little animal thing and I'm dipping it in the ground like that doo -doo 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 -doo. and the, he jumps out of the truck and he's got a big stick with him and he's going you nap here an idiot <laughs> and he's hit, hitting me with it. well we had to have a little short rehearsal not so much for us because who cared about us we were just the actors they were trying to figure out where they were going to put the camera and make sure everybody was in the right place and all that kind of thing so J Jimmy and I had been you know laboring here in this low budget movie and we said, uh, uh, it was late at night. We were tired. And I said, just before the rehearsal, I said, hey, Jimmy. He goes, well, what's that, Ed? I did Jimmy Seedow's voice as good as he does. <laughs> I loved the way he talked. I couldn't help but mimic him all the time. He would always laugh. And he, I said, uh, let's wind Hooper up. Toby Hooper, the director. Let's just wind him up. And he said, well... Oh, well, I don't know. It might make him mad and then fire us. I said, Jimmy, he ain't going to fire us. We could shoot the cameraman they wouldn't fire us because they can't reshoot all the scenes. He goes, oh, yeah, I guess that's right. So I said, just follow me. He goes, okay. So we start the rehearsal. You and that pair did. What are you doing there? I told you to stay away from there. And I, and I looked up at Jimmy and I went, well, I don't know, you know, I was going over there and I was getting some of them bodies. And he says, well, don't get them bodies. I told you not to. And I said, well, I had to have them bodies. And two, Ho Toby Hooper is on the other side of the camera and he looks out from behind and he, in horror because he's hearing two Jimmy Seedows. <laughs> and he looks over at the producer who's standing right beside him and he goes, what are they doing? And the producer started laughing, and he said, Well, Toby, I think they're messing with you. And he goes, Cut that out. And Jimmy C. Dow turned, and I both turned to Toby at the same time and went, Okay. <laughs> and the cast and crew were all laughing and going on the ground. Well, that's what you can get away with in a low-budget movie. So now you know a little weird part of the film's history. Uh, Josh says, you know what you need to do? You need to encourage Alex to pursue her passion. Well, if you're passionate about something, you darn sure ought to pursue it. They told me when I was young, uh, you got to get a job. Uh, you can type real fast. Why don't you get a job as a court reporter? And I said, no, nah, I don't want to do that. They said, well, you ought to get a job in a warehouse. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. And they said, well, you ought to get a job uh, uh, working the docks, put, loading boats. That's steady work. 
I said, no, nah, I really don't want to do that. And they said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to, I want to act. I want to create characters different than myself. I want to be somebody I'm not. I want to be somebody silly. I want to be somebody sad. I want to be somebody <laughs> happy. <laughs> and so I started doing that. That was my passion. And I'm doing it to this day. We're recording tomorrow. <laughs> um, so I'm going to ask you to pursue whatever it is that you feel strongly about. Don't worry about it working out. Because if it doesn't, you can just get passionate about something else. But I do hope that it does work out for you. Take care.